everyone. My name is Andrew O. Oh. I am a VP of product and head of design. And I am doing episode two of how to interview a top tech companies. Today, we'll be going over our topic, execution. More specifically, we're going to be going over metric definition. This is the second part out of our five part series where I am covering um, how to interview at top tier tech companies like Facebook, Google, and more, um, covering the basis of the different types of interview categories you're going to be getting asked. And so without further ado, let's dive right into it. All right, so just as a, another quick, quick brief background about myself, I am, again, a VP of product and head of design that most recently served at Poolong, which is a Series B stock and crypto trading app based in Indonesia. Before that, I was at TikTok as a lead product manager, working as a founding product, uh, working as a founding product manager on a zero to one product. Um, and before that, I was at Grab as a senior PM working on a fraud product. Uh, aside from just my corporate career, I've also been a founder. I've founded startups ranging from e-commerce and sports product accessories to manufacturing to social. Um, I've also been part of the Alchemist Accelerator program based in San Francisco, and I am an exponent product management interview coach. So today we'll be going over execution and more specifically, that will be metric definition. Afterwards, we'll be going through the whole framework and breaking down uh, the most important piece there, which is the strategy, which you'll use to then define your key metrics. And then we'll be going through a walkthrough on a specific metric selection. So I've done this, uh, this presentation a little bit differently. This time I will, I'll, I have a little bit more detailed slides um, and more specific examples that we can go through. Um, and so let's, let's get right to it. So what is execution? What is metric definition? Execution is a, a term that may be used differently across different companies, but the one that we're most familiar with or the way that we're defining it today is all about metrics. So you have two types of metric interviews that you're going to be, um, that you're going to be doing. One is metric definition. So that's defining and setting goals for your team. And the last would be metric change. So you'll be given a prompt on a metric that changed for a specific product or company, and you'd have to diagnose um, why that metric changed. And so why is this being assessed? We are, assess uh, we are assessing um, more specifically around your way of thinking with regards to setting, with, with regards to two parts. So I'll go over the, the definition part first and only this because we'll have a separate um, episode for the metric change. So for metric definition, um, what's really being assessed here is your ability to set and establish North Star metrics and goals to help orient the team's efforts um, and also your roadmap for accomplishing impact which is ultimately what we product managers have to do. Um, so driving impact in the right areas, that is essentially what is being assessed here. And more specifically, you're going to be assessed in terms of your framework and way of thinking on how to structure um, the pathway towards coming up with really great goals for your team. The person that'll be interviewing you <laughs> for these kinds of interviews um, will still likely be product leads and up. So could be managerial based um, product managers uh, or it could be VPs, directors, et cetera. Some examples of metric definitions questions you're going to be asked could be, for example, define goals and success for Instagram. How would you define the North Star metric or key metric for TikTok? And lastly, how would you structure the team's goals? These are all alluding to essentially the same, uh, the same question, same assessment criteria, and we'll be going over one of these questions more in depth. So for the case question we'll be reviewing today, how would you define the North Star or key metric for TikTok? 
So there's a few um, clarifying questions you're going to want to ask here. And um, as you can see from the slide, I've, I've run down a little bit more detailed footnotes uh, <laughs> that we can uh, go over together. So the first question is, and again, I think this is a great tactic that more advanced um, interview interviewees should be using. Just ask if it's first OK to make some data assumptions. This is going to help you make data uh, assumptions on the fly to better make prioritization and trade-off decisions or to help magnify opportunities. The second question, the, the second question is not really a question, but more so um, just reviewing the product and walking through with your interviewer the typical TikTok UX in this case. So walk through um, you know, from A to Z, what is a typical TikTok UX? Talk me through, you know, why do people go to this app? What is it really used for? Who are the people that we think are kind of using it? Just like touches, but really I'm just trying to get a better sense to make sure that we're on the same page for our understanding of the baseline product. Third <clears throat> will then be asking if there's a regional focus. So like the product sense, um, this is a really important part of your strategy to help define goals. So TikTok today in the US, uh, which I believe has captured well over 100 million Americans out of 300 Americans out of there, uh, 300 million Americans, um, you know, it's, it, it's done really well. And you can argue for its target market, which could be Gen Z's and millennials, it's probably captured over like well over 50%, maybe even 80% or more. Um, of people today. So the regional focus in that case, you know, if you were to place that regional focus and attribute a state of product to the US, you might say, well, it's already captured most of the most of the users. We are probably not thinking of it being more towards the mature stage as we start shifting goals towards monetization. <clears throat> and so that's why it's important to really determine and align on what is the regional focus because you know, if you are building this for say Southeast Asia, that could be a very different story. The growth stage, uh, the stage of the product would be in its growth stage, not the mature stage, and therefore the goals would also be different. So for this case, um, we're going to uh, say maybe the interviewer said, hey, you know, uh, let's focus on Southeast Asia. If the interviewer doesn't um, provide a specific market, then you can go ahead and make an assumption on which market you think makes the most sense for us to focus on. So in this case, we'll choose Southeast Asia. Um, and here's why. And so this is when you can start using some of the knowledge you have to make some data assumptions. It may or may not be right. That's not that's not the point. It's just about seeing how you think. So, uh, you know, Southeast Asia, I can see why that makes a lot of sense. We have 4 billion people, um, which is 60% of the world's population just living in this market alone. Um, with the GDP growth of over 4%, bullish 20 year outlook in that case. Um, it's a 10 billion opportunity today, growing 10% year over year, uh, which means it's likely to be over 10 billion, over $100 billion in terms of digital ad spend opportunity markets in the next 10 years. Um, so yeah, you know, so regional focus, Southeast Asia makes a lot of sense. Um, given given the Southeast Asia, and you know, let's just make another assumption: we only have 20% um, <clears throat> penetration in terms of the target users that we're targeting today, which is millennials and Gen Z's, um, our goal is going to be centered around user growth. So now we go to the second part of this framework, which is about context and users. And so <clears throat> first start with the mission. What's TikTok's mission is to inspire creativity and bring joy to its users. Next, you can talk about the strategy and how that ties back into the mission. The strategy here is really the key component that you're going to need to provide that direction on how to structure your, your goals, or in other case, um, your metrics when we get down to it. So I wrote a little bit of a prompt here. The strategy is in order to grow the user base in Southeast Asia, to hopefully one day encompass our 4 billion people in APAC, which is 60% of the world's population, um, and therefore fulfilling our ability to inspire creativity and bring joy to the world, um, our strategy would be this. If 0.1% of creators, of users, can create 90% of the most highly engaged videos on the platform, 
will have a really strong growth loop activated. The more highly engaged content we can create, the more people are going to refer their friends to come on board, the more likely they're going to share really cool TikTok videos, like download it, share it on Instagram stories, et cetera, or just WhatsApp it or iMessage it to their friends. Um, <clears throat> and so if we can even get 0.1% of users to create really great videos, we're going to have a really strong growth loop there. Um, mind you, let's also just assume that we've, we've seen this kind of behavior already, um, this referral based behavior already validated in other markets that we've been in in the past. Now the short term goal would be to bring global entertainment to a pack region, the Asia Pacific region region. And the long term goal would be winning this region, which will secure the $100 billion market opportunity in the next 10 years. Now let's think about the user segmentation here. I've identified three specific types of users. The first is creators. So these are people who are just creating videos. Uh, they could also double up as viewers, which is the second user segment. Viewers. So these are people who typically come to the platform. Their goal is to view the videos, uh, get entertained. And then last, we have advertisers. Advertisers are people that uh, whether the small businesses or big enterprise that come to the platform to create ads and hopefully inbound uh, more traffic and sales. Now, what I've done here is I've further segmented each of these user segments. So I call, what I like to do is I like to call the first layer, layer one. So layer one is the creators, viewers, and advertisers. And then I call the subsections layer two. So for creators, um, I've defined the layer two as friends. Uh, so these are uh, creators who are just creating more for their friends and family. Long tail creators. So long tail creators are creators that maybe have in or between a couple hundred to maybe like 10,000 um, or even 50,000 uh, followers. So these are the long tail the creators um, of which are hoping to then transition to the last layer two segment here, which is the full time slash powerhouse creators. So these could be celebrities. These could just be huge, massive creators uh, that have, you know, anywhere beyond 50,000 followers and are then able to monetize and do this full time. But I would say, you know, these people likely have hundreds of thousands at the very least. Um, <clears throat> so these are the layer two creator segments that I've identified. We then have viewers. So uh, for the viewer side, we have what I call casual viewers. So these are people who just, you know, momentarily throughout the day, open the app, get entertained, maybe they're just eating lunch, et cetera. Um, just casually browsing, uh, no real goal in mind. And then you have the addicts. The addicts. So the addict viewers are uh, people who are well addicted to the app. So they're constantly going on the app to get entertained, get that dopamine hit, uh, and just contribute a lot of their free time and day to day. Um, on, on the app and, and scroll through. The last is advertisers. So for the advertisers layer two, I'm identifying that as SMBs, mid-market businesses. So mid-tier mid -tier businesses and enterprise. Now, in terms of the user segment, which I think is going to be really key and crucial for us to prioritize, um, when it comes to really activating this growth of strategy and making it work, um, I think it's going to be the creator side, as mentioned, if you can get even just 0.1% of these, of these users to start creating videos and really good videos, we're going to have a pretty impressive growth loop activated, which is going to increase our user growth ratio by a factor of um, a very high level. So more specifically than um, I'm this means I'm not looking at the full time or powerhouse creators. I'm more specifically considering friends or long tail creators. And so this is where I need to maybe just take a step back and think more logically as to which one makes the most sense. Does it make more sense to try to convince people who may also, again, be a little bit more private to, um, to create videos with the goal of trying to attract um, lots of attention to themselves, but also to increase the follower base? Or does it make more sense to go after the long tail of users um, to constantly then create more videos and hopefully we can help achieve their user goal 
of um, obtaining more followers and hopefully help them monetize in the future. <clears throat> now, we don't have any data here, so I might have to make an assumption to help make this right, or at least in, the, in, in a better direction. So for the long tail, you know, if these long tail users are 0.5% of the entire user base, uh, and our strategy here, as you can see, is to get 0.1% of users to create highly engaged videos. It means we need 20% of these long tail creators to be successful. That might be a bit of a stretch because let's be honest, not every single long tail um, creator is going to be um, able to create really great content. Um, however, you know, maybe let's just say that's that's 2% of, of creators uh, that are actually more long tail creators who are trying to, again, achieve the use goal of gaining a, a better following <clears throat> and, uh, and taking this video creation process a lot more seriously, um, then, you know, that may make more sense. If, and then, you know, maybe the interviewer goes ahead and says, Hey, look, you know, uh, actually we, we did look into the data and we saw that only, um, that long tail creators are actually in fact only 0.5% of all the creators. Uh, or all of all the users on the platform, then you would have to make a logical. You would need to make a logical decision if it still makes sense to go after that specific user segment, <clears throat> or if you should be going after the friends. Um, there is no right or wrong answer here. You just want to try to lean yourself into a justifiable argument towards one way or the other. Uh, now, in this case, I'm just going to stick with long tail for simplicity's sake. We'll just assume that it's actually two percent of the users, um, and also I just think that. More realistically, the long tail users um, are people who are already have that intention to create really high quality videos and to try to go viral. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot less friction and a lot more opportunity there um, to solve for uh, in order to achieve the goals and help us obtain this growth loop. Then you can go through the user journey. So I covered this also in the product sense um, video last episode, but basically you just want to walk through what someone in the long tail creator. Um, creator a segment would actually go through when they're creating videos. Um, what, is, what, is that, what is that entire process like? Uh, even before they pick up the, the app and start creating videos, you know, we can, you can just tell me even like what their day, what their day is like. Um, Capturing content wherever they go. Um, you know, with the mindset of I'm going to be creating something at the end of the day and collating all this content. <clears throat> to to create a, a viral TikTok video. Um, so you can talk about the journey of um, why the person uh, why the person wants to be a long tail a long tail creator or an influencer. Um, you know how do they plan their day in terms of capturing content? Um, what are some of the problems that they're facing along the way? Um, talk me through the process of them actually going on the app and stitching together a video. Um, and then what is the process like even after the launch video? Uh, you know, setting up the tags, um, being responsive to comments and likes, et cetera. Um, <coughs> so you want to just kind of walk through the interviewer throughout the entire user journey. That's going to be really insightful to not only showing your empathy and depth in the empathy, uh, but more importantly, you're going to also be able to potentially see new opportunities. Um, and in this case, more specifically, it could help you really identify what are the, some of the key metrics um, that you might actually want to consider uh, when it comes to that final piece. And so after you walk through the user journey, take a step back, ask for maybe two to three minutes to start writing down what are the key metrics um, that you want to prioritize. And so the way that I've structured the metrics here is in four different parts. Number one is the OKR. So the OKR is going to be that department level me metric that has been assigned to the department in order to achieve. Second is the North Star metric. So what is that key P0 North Star metric that's going to help accomplish the OKR? Three to five KPIs or key performance indicators. And then lastly, one to three guardrails. And, and if you don't know, guardrails are more like defensive metrics. You know, examples of this could be fraud, um, could be fake content, could be, um, uh, let's see. Well, 
we'll, we'll leave it to that for now. But those are just examples of, of potential guardrail topics of which you can derive metrics from. So um, I've already prepared some specific metrics that we could be reviewing for this case. Now, <clears throat> I'll walk you through the different columns that I have set up here. Column one is just simply what are the metric types. So OKR, not star KPI, and guardrail. Second column that we have here in this table is metric name. So just the name of the metric itself. And the last column here, and I'm sorry, I didn't spell that definition right, but the last column here uh, is specifically uh, about how we're defining that metric. So I'll go over each of the metrics uh, in the rows that I have here so far. The OKR, as the OKR is directly tied to the stage of the product. And we mentioned that early on that it's, since we're focusing on APAC, um, our, our goal is centered around user growth. So the OKR for this department is to increase the number of users on a month to month basis. The North Star, I will get to later because I, I like to actually go through the KPIs first and then uh, think about what the North Star could possibly be. So for some of the North Star, uh, sorry, for some of the KPIs, I wrote down the following. One is the engagement rate um, per user, and we're just assessing that by time spent per daily active user and weekly active user. Um, so this is great. Uh, this just gives us kind of like a baseline understanding, um, you know, as a PM, you, you should just be a little bit more aware of what the engagement rate's like um, for these that you have on board, because um, this can actually feed into many other metrics that you that could be relevant or strategic in terms of insights that it could be providing you. Um, also, it's a social app. I think engagement rate is kind of a given. The second KPI that we have here is the percentage of users who are creators. So um, the way that we're defining this is just creators over the total number of users on the platform. And you would still have to even define what we mean by creators here. Is creator someone that created one video, five video? Was it like one video a week? So you can also just decide to define it based on a timeline. So one video a week versus one video a month. Um, it's up to you. Just make sure it, it makes sense uh, the way that you do it. Uh, maybe the creator also has to have their um, their TikTok account turned to public and not private. That would make a lot more sense as well, given that um, you know the way that we define the long tail creators is that they're trying to gain a massive following. So um, set up the cr criteria parameters for how you're going to define um, that specific user segment. So just to recap, KPI number two is the percentage of users who are creators. KPI three is the average time spent to create a video. And we're um, defining that by from start to finish of the video creation process. Sorry, I made another, another typo there. Um, KPI four is the average number of users who were referred per user. So that could be either tracked by the referral link or copy and paste. Could be from the address book as well. Um, but yeah, that's how we can define that. KPI number five, and this is the last KPI, is the D1, so day one, to D7 retention rate. And we're tracking that by, say, you know, that could be the user opening the app, simply by opening the app because they go straight to the TikTok homepage where it's more like a video feed. Um, or it could be, say, watching one whole video per session. Um, up to you how you want to define it. So these are the five KPIs. And so what I like to do is I like to just talk about the OKR first, think about the KPI second, and then I'd like to actually then come up with the North Star because sometimes one of those KPIs could in of itself be a North Star metric, or it could just help really, again, allow you to get, to get the time to take a step back and think more objectively from the whole ecosystem that we just discussed, uh, from the user journey, the user goals, like what really is that North Star metric that's going to really feel that OKR. Um, and for us, we can just look back at the strategy. Our strategy was 0.01% of users will create highly engaged videos, which would feed the growth loop. So therefore, um, I'm going to be placing the North Star metric as the increased percentage of highly engaged videos. And how we can define highly engaged videos um, could be some kind of fact, um, factor ratio of likes, comments, and views. 
um, that that could be that could be a way to just uh, indicate that these are um, high potential, high virality alleles. Sorry, just to clarify the definition again, it's likes some percentage factor of likes and comments over views. So that's how we can maybe define highly engaged videos. And then I also just have one guardrail metric that I just put here um, as well to check a box. So for for us, that's going to be the percentage of fraud slash abusive users. Fraudulent users could be just fake accounts that came here for a specific negative reason. Abusive accounts or abusive users could be people that came onto this platform um, and started maybe leaving harassment um, comments or messages to other people. Um, how we can define this is maybe by some factor of either user got reported X number of times, um, or it could even be, say, mid to high tier fraud score. Um, and so the guardrail in this case could help us to filter out um, you know, bad users and clean our data for how we're looking at the rest of the KPIs, North Star and OKR. And that is it. So um, hope you really enjoyed the session. Um, this is just, again, a quick walkthrough of how you can, of how to break down uh, a question um, for metric definition. And you can replicate and rehearse this framework with your friends, uh, with your marketing partners, with yourself. And, um, and once you're ready, feel free to hit apply to all of those companies you want to spur and pray to. And, um, and I really wish you guys all the best in the hunt. That's all for today. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next session. Take care.